good morning it's wednesday morning once again my friend it's bible study time it's time to search the scriptures it's time to study to show ourselves approved unto god it's time to meditate as we read and study god's word as we read together thank you for joining us we are so excited about another day uh, that the Lord has blessed us. Yes, I said us because uh, uh, God is still worthy of all the praise. And I thank him for you. I thank him for you. Again, we appreciate you being with us and we're going to encourage you to um, share uh, this Bible study. If you just hit the share arrow, amen, if you can and will. So this will go out into the highways and the byways, amen, to encourage those who are already uh, serving the Lord and saved. And also it may help convince others uh, before it's everlasting too late uh, to accept Christ, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior and to um, ask for forgiveness of sins so that we can have uh, eternal life and be in the right fellowship with God. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining us. I'm excited about uh, the Word of God. Another time, amen, to share with you today. Again, thank you all for joining us. We're going to have a good time. Amen. Get on on the bus. Get on the bus. Find you a seat. And we're going to ride the Bible study bus this morning through the Bible of the Lord. Good morning. We're talking about endurance today. Uh, good morning, Trustee Bonner. God bless you. Good morning, Miss Vanessa Dawkins. Miss Gloria Davis, good morning. Hey, good morning, Meryl. God bless you, Meryl. Little John. Miss Nancy Knuckles, God bless you. Good morning to you and to your wonderful husband, my friend and brother, Yolanda Reed. Good morning, Yolanda. And family, we thank God for you all joining us. Sharon Leach, good morning to you. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, hope everyone is well. Janine is on the scene. Good morning, Miss Janine Davidson. Tamika, Tamika is with us this morning. Miss Mary Marie McGill, thank you for joining us. And I think it does say. Amen. We're glad to have you with us, Miss Marie McGill. Also, Miss Mary Wittenberg and the Reverend Dewey Wittenberg. Thank you for joining us. It says Dolly Dewberry. Good morning. Amen. Lula Watts Gregory. What's up, Coors? Good morning. Tarika Rashford. Good morning. Trustee Norris. Good morning. God, morning to you, sir. Every part of the day is God. Every second is God. Amen. Miss Bell, Cynthia Bell, good morning. Glad to have you with us, you and your family. Thank you for joining. Miss Ernestine is on the scene. Amen. Miss Pernice Thompson, good morning. And God bless you. Yeah, you for your mother. Yes, we're so thankful. She is home. Miss Davidson is home doing well. And we're so thankful. We rejoice with you and thankful that she is home. All right, here we go. We're getting ready to get this bus started. Amen. I'm let the air brakes off, and we're going to pray, and we're going to let the good times roll. Father, we thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for your people who are joining us all over. God, this country, all over the world, we're gathered together at one place and in one accord. Father, we're not in the upper room, but where we are, we thank you for the room. God, that we can study, look at our electronic devices, and God, and it, it seems as if we are in the same place. We are in the same place in the Spirit. For you said, where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you will be in the midst. God, dwell with us today as we study about endurance, uh, about uh, your endurance, about our endurance, about how uh, uh, you will uh, uh, always uh, be there, and, and we pray, God, that you will strengthen uh, our brothers and sisters today because we have to go through some things on this side of heaven. Help us, oh God, to grow and help us to share 
of God, our knowledge and our experience with others so that they can see uh, that you are real. Thank you. Touch our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts to believe, our minds to understand. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hmm? You said amen. All right. That's why I want them to make sure you said amen. Amen. Linda Fay Lou Hui, good morning to you. Miss Annette Hardy Smith, good morning. To Annette Verge, good morning, cuz. Miss Verge Posey, good morning to you. And again, we're excited. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm uh, uh, 30. Amen. And last week, amen, we looked at uh, being watered so that we could be fruitful. We talked about the fruit of the Spirit. We talked about being pruned. And we also talked about fertilizer. Amen. Fertilizer. Mess. Amen. It's called uh, a lot of names. Amen. It's called a lot of names. I'm telling you. It's called a lot of names. I would run through the list. But, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm not going to go there. But just we're just going to call it mess. Amen. And sometimes mess. Uh, is, 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 is fertilizer, amen, so that we could grow and acknowledge uh, that we are in a mess. Our mess is around us so that we can get closer to God so that we can grow. And yes, sometimes it takes the good and the bad and the ugly, amen, as a recap of last week to help us grow. Amen. Thank you. I pray that you're growing. Amen. Miss Ann Byers, good morning to you. Amen. And Tim Huey, God bless you also this morning. Um, we've got Bud Fowler, good morning, Miss Lakeisha Logan, good morning, Lisa Gregg, Lin Linda Gregg, excuse me, Linda Gregg, thank you so much for joining us all the way in Winston-Salem, Iris Smith, good morning to you and to all of you, Karen Palin, God bless you, glad to have you with us, Karen, God bless you. If you have your Bibles. Psalm 30 is where we're starting today. This is a psalm uh, and song at the dedication of the house of David. Amen. When David built his house, amen, there in the Bible, he uh, ended up, as you know, the youngest of Jesse boys. And, um, and, and David had uh, seven brothers. Amen. I'm going to ask you a question. And how many brothers did David have? I want to see it on the screen. Good morning, Aunt Dorothy Petty and Uncle Robert. Glad to have you two with us today. How many brothers did David have in the Bible? And before he was a king, he was just uh, the youngest boy in the family. Before he was the king, amen, he was just doing chores for his father. Before he was the king, amen, he was out feeding uh, the sheep. Before he was the king, he was an errand. He was a messenger for his father, a man going to check on his brothers who were in the army there at the valley uh, where the uh, Philistines were. And they had a big giant there by the name of Goliath. Amen. And my next question is, what was the name of the big giant? A man that was there in the Philistine army that was waiting and talking about the people of God and even talked about uh, God. Amen. Amen. I see the answers out there for a portion of it. And I'm looking for, oh, y'all getting the answers? Y'all getting it out there? Yep, 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 yep. And some of us have one or two brothers and can't get along with them. Amen. We got to learn how to love our family and our neighbors. We got to learn how to love our friends. Amen. God bless you. That is awesome. And I'm still looking. Oh, there it is. The name of the giant. There you go. It's coming in. Some of y'all are getting it. I see there. Mm-hmm. Y'all will know about that Bible. That's what I'm talking about. You need to know your Bible just like you know about the young and the wrestling. Uh, you need to know your Bible like you know about power. Uh... You need to learn your Bible just like your favorite show or your favorite football team or ba uh, basketball team. Isn't it amazing we can learn everything about an R&B singer or a rapper, but when it comes time to God, amen, we, that's not what interests us. I come to tell you it's good to know about God and his family and his works because that's the, the, 
the, the, the foundation for his endurance. That's the foundation for the endurance that we're going to need because sometimes we're going to need something to look back on to give us strength when the road uh, gets hard ahead, and it will get rough. All y'all got the right answers. Y'all are awesome out there. Good Lord, if we was in church out in the sanctuary, and I can't give y'all candy until y'all on the way out of the sanctuary. Cause we can't eat candy and stuff in the sanctuary. But y'all will be, only thing we can eat in the sanctuary is the Lord's Supper. And we're going to have it Sunday. You you haven't had it in a while because of the pandemic. You need to come get your soul fed. And and, and, and if it wasn't important, Jesus wouldn't have told us not, uh, to do it. But he just said, do this. Just do in remembrance of me. As often. Amen. If you do eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come, which is another endurance. It's endurance. He did it, but we're remembering him. It endures in our memory uh, as, as we do that to know that he died for us. Amen. He died for us. The Lamb of God died for us. Amen. Amen. He died for the whole world. Amen. But the whole world won't receive salvation. Uh, uh, but they could. But the only thing you got to do is believe. And my question to you is, do you believe? Amen. Good morning, Trustee Hui. God bless you. Glad to have you with us this morning. Thank you, man. Uh, well, get on the bus. Get on the bus, man. Get on the bus. We have seats for you, and, and we like them New York buses and, 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 and the New York buses and subways. Amen. If you don't have a seat, just, just, just stand up and grab the rail. <laughs> huh? Just stand up and grab the rail. Hold on. Hold on. Huh? Hold on. God bless you. Here we go. Now, we talked about, amen, David a, a little bit ago, and this ends up with David. And David was a man of war after killing Goliath, amen, and becoming, amen, a uh, favorite of the army after receiving such accolades and uh, receiving the blessings of new taxation for him and his father and also for receiving, amen, the uh, reward, amen, for doing uh, such a good work. He got to marry Saul's daughter. And in the midst of that, he became a leader. Good morning, Miss Jenkins. Glad to have you with us, Mr. Lord Jenkins and Miss Annie Littlejohn at Brooklyn's in the house. All right. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. And, and, and we're just so thankful. Now, after he became a leader, amen, he wanted to build the temple. He wanted to build the temple, amen. But, but, but God said, David, you're not going to build the temple. Uh, uh, you a man of war, but he did build him a home. He built him a house. So this psalm is a psalm of when David dedicated uh, his house. Amen. Not, not not the Lord's house. Solomon built the Lord's house, the temple, but David did build him a house. Amen. So my question, because you know David uh, 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 built him a house. Amen. Now, now and I'm going to ask you, amen, when was this psalm written? I just told you, and I'm looking for the answer. Good morning, Miss Sharon Sims. How are things with you? Don't fall this well. Are you still in Mississippi, Miss Sims? God bless you. Just want to ask you that because we got people all over the country, amen, right here together at this appointed time to study God's word. Amen. Amen. Psalm 30, when was this written? Amen. This Psalm of David, when did he write it? Amen. I'm looking for the answer. Amen. I'm, I'm going on. Let's read verse 1. That we, we're reading verse 1. We, yes. God bless you. Thank you, Miss Sam. Appreciate that. And then we appreciate your support all the way, halfway across the United States. Always. Thank you so much. Come on. Verse 1. Here we go. Ready and read. Amen. Good morning, Latoya. In the house. Good morning, Latoya. And to your family. Amen. Here we go. Now, I'm still looking for the answer up there. I, I just told you, when, when was Psalm 30 written? When was it written? Amen. When was it written? I'm looking for the answer. I got a delay on my end, but I'm looking for when was it written? When was it written? Amen. I, and I have to go back. I'll have to give you another, uh, uh, give you a couple of hints if I don't see it in just a few moments. Verse 30. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Psalm 30, verse 1. Come on. I need everybody to read. I need you to share this with your brothers and sisters so that we all can grow. Our friends and family can grow in the knowledge of God. Come on, verse 1. It says, I will extol thee, O Lord. Yes, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes 
to rejoice over me. That's what he said there in uh, Psalm 30, verse 1. And I'm still looking for the answer. When was Psalm 30 written? Amen. Again, it was written when David dedicated his house. Amen. When he dedicated his house, that's when it was written. Amen. And I will be looking for the answer on the screen. I need everybody that can get that can 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 uh, comment to please put it out there. Because if you put it out there, you it will help you to always remember these answers. I'm just not getting you to to put the answers out there. No, I'm not trying to test how fast you can type. No, I'm not doing that. I'm doing. We are doing it this way, an interactive Bible study, so that we all can grow. So that we all can uh, 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 be strengthened, so that we all can be uh, uh, knowledgeable, so that we all can 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 influence others, Amen. By what we know about God, to convince others to try Jesus, Amen, Amen, Amen. And God bless you, and I love you. Thank you, Miss Jackie Bridges, Amen. It was written when David dedicated his house. That's when it was written, Amen. It's when it was written. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Bonner, yeah, when David dedicated his house, that's when it was written. So that's why it's important that even in the phases of our life, amen, and when God bless us and when we grow, don't leave God out, amen. So many times we do things and leave God out. God wants to be there in the good times, amen. God wants to be there when times are difficult. God wants to be there all the time. He, and as a matter of fact, he is there all the time. Amen. But sometimes uh, people ignore God and push him out. Amen. But don't do that. God wants to be included. And that's uh, what it means to endurance. Amen. It's about hanging in there when times are tough. It's about hanging in there when times are difficult. Amen. That's what uh, uh, um, um, endurance means. Going through the struggle. Amen. Putting up with what you got to put up with. Amen. Endurance means, to, uh, and as an adjective, it means that you're that you're tough and that you are durable. You're, you're you're not easily to give up. Amen. You 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 can't give up. That that's what this is about. You have to go through life sometimes uh, with more downs than ups. Amen. And sometimes your downs will be more lengthy than the time you're up. But when you are up, Amen. That's the time to extol Him. Because I'm sure as David was building his house, it was tough. Getting the supplies there, supplying the money, supplying, amen, the, the manpower, the, 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 the workers, the women, amen, that did their part, all who played a part in building his house. He, I know it was difficult. Anybody out there ever built, built anything? Amen. Anybody out there ever put a bicycle together? Amen. Sometimes that's a hard job. Amen. Should take about an hour, but sometimes it might take two days. To put that bicycle together, but but with, with, with going through it, amen, it, it's difficult, but riding the bike is awesome, amen. Uh, uh, working on the car engine, trying to find out why it won't crank sometime will take a couple of hours, but when you find out what's wrong and you fix it, and then you can rejoice and drive that vehicle, amen, and that's how it is with life. Sometimes life is difficult, but when you go through it and you make the proper adjustments and life will be better on the other side of the problem, David said, I will extol thee. That's what David said. David, amen, a man after God's own heart. That's what he said. He said, Lord, I will extol thee. And, and hey, that's what he said. Can y'all write the word out there, extol? That is the third word in that particular verse. And as we look at verse 1, thank you, God, I want you to look at the first two words in that verse. What are the first two words in, in Psalm 30, verse 1? I want to see them on the screen. Put them on the screen. I need you to put them first two words on the screen. And once you put them on the screen, where you are, in your home, in your car, on your job, I want you to say those first two words out loud. Yes, I said out loud. Tamika, if you can't say it out loud, say it out loud. If you can't say it out loud, Tamika, you think about it loud as you can. I want you to put them. Yeah, that's, that's the third word. And then I want you all to put the first two words out there on that screen. Because there's power in these three words. Huh? These three words. That's Stevie Wonder right there. Short and sweet and simple. That's Stevie Wonder. <laughs> these three words. Short and kind. Them three words was I love you. These three words, 
And Reverend Williams just recently preached a sermon about that. These these three words about the words that the Lord uh, said there in the Bible. Hey Amen. You got to look back through the archives and see that, and see what Reverend Williams was preaching about. But now we're looking at Exodus. Uh, excuse me, Psalm 30, uh, verse 1. Amen. It said, I will. Oh, come on. Can, can you say, I will? <laughs> see, see what happens is, a lot of times we go to church, we watch other people praise God. Yeah, sometimes you go to church, you watch the choir praise God. You watch the praise team. You watch the musicians praise God. You watch that one person on your pew that's not ashamed, that, that'll get up and give God some praise. But, but you got to get to the point where you will do it. <laughs> Amen. He said, I will extol thee. See, see, David, when he, he, he was concerned about other folk, but when it comes time to praising God, amen, other folk, amen, you, you shouldn't uh, 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 um, uh, base whether you're going to praise him or not on what God did for them. <laughs> so you got to praise God for what he did for you. <laughs> huh? Did that help anybody? Amen. I see you out there, Miss Kamalanda. God bless you. Amen, amen. We got everybody right there. I see Miss Missy Reed on. Good morning to you, sir. Councilwoman. God bless you. Amen. Yeah, he said, I will do it. You got to get to the point where you're going to do it. No, and, and sometime in the, in, in, in the worship leader or the, the, or the choir director or the pastor or uh, will direct you and say, please stand or, or we'll ask you to join in. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's asking you to do it. But when people stand up, everybody still don't praise them. Some of them looking at the watch. Some of them looking at the shoe. Some of them twisting the, the suit jacket. Some of them uh, uh, twisting their dress, trying to get it to, to fall down right. No, we're going to stand up and praise the Lord here. What, what you going to do? Hmm? We got to get to the point where the praise is coming out. Huh? Where the praise is coming out. Not... Waving at somebody on the other side or the other out. No, no. That's good. It's good to acknowledge them. But get back to the praise. That's what we come to church to do. Huh? David understood all of this. He said, I'm going to extol thee. Now, I want to look at this word, amen, extol. Because the word extol, it means to rise up. I'm going to rise up and praise you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to exalt you. Lord, I lift your name on high. Y'all remember that? Y'all heard that song before? Huh? And talk about your prayer. You, you, you got to learn how to lift him up. Positivity lifts him up. Amen. Glorification lifts him up. Amen. It's just talking about his goodness. That's what's enduring. We got to get to talk about his goodness. That's giving God publicity. Amen. You are a commercial for the Lord. <laughs> Especially if you say you you saved, if you're a believer, if you are a Christian, you you are you are a believer for the Lord. You are a believer. You are commercial, amen. And if people watch you, uh, as they watch commercials, what type of vibe are you giving them about God? <laughs> now David said, "I'm going to extol thee." Huh? Would they look at you and say, "Did they look boring?" They like that. They don't appreciate God. They like they don't know who He is. Yeah, you you got to you, to represent. You have to praise Him. You have to extol Him to lift Him up. Higher, higher, higher. I'll draw all men, draw all men unto me. I wonder, will you help me, help me lift Jesus? Huh? Help me, help me lift Jesus. Ooh, help me, help me lift Jesus. Wonder will you help me, help me lift Jesus. Come on, higher, 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 higher. He said, I'll draw all men, draw all men unto me. See, he said, if I be lifted up, yeah, this is twofold. One, he said, if I be lifted up, yes, he's talking about if they lift him up on that cross, yes, lift him up. But also, he said, if you tell the world about me, if you, if you, if you lift my name, if you tell them, that's what it meant by lift the hymn. 
Some of y'all from the old church, from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Some of y'all might be in from the 50s. Amen. But but the old church used to say, I want to lift the hymn. See, the, the, the words are in the book. Lord, have mercy. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody here right now to show you how to lift Jesus. You see, the, the words to the hymn are in the book. <laughs> but if the book is closed, the words just in there. <laughs> if, if, you, if you never move it from the back of the pew, the words are just in there. Shut up. A man not helping anybody. <laughs> They're just in there. But that's why we have to lift and open our Bibles and our hymns. And, and the old deacons and old church leaders used to say, I'm going to lift the hymn. In other words, I'm going to read what's on this page. I'm going to uh, 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 put it through my mind and through my heart and bring it through my vocal cords and let it come off my tongue and roll through past my teeth and my lips. And I'm going to lift it in the atmosphere so others can hear and join in with me. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you got to have lift a hymn. See, some people sing, but they don't lift the hymn. They pull it down. In other words, uh, they don't really want to sing. Amen. They, they know the words, but they don't feel the words. They, they know the words, but they don't believe the words. They, they know the words to the song. They know every break. Amen. But when they sing it, they don't sing it with power. They don't sing it with feeling. They don't sing it with faith. Amen. And that's why it's so important, amen, that when we preach, teach, or do anything from this Bible, we should do it in such a way that it looks somebody who's in hearing range. <laughs> huh? Because faith comes by hearing. Hearing will cause you to perk up. Uh, that's why in the old days, some people look like they'd be asleep until the preacher tune up and he start to say something about something. <laughs> huh? And that power, that, 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 that authority, and that's how Jesus did. Jesus talked with authority. He lifted up God as he was reading that Bible and teaching around Jerusalem. Huh? Do you lift Jesus? Do you lift others in prayer? You ever heard somebody say, lift me up in prayer? Some people prayer is so sad and sorrowful. Man, they'll have you crying and and, 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 and making you want to go uh, to the altar and pray by yourself because they don't pull you down with their prayer. Yeah, we acknowledge that we endure what we're going through, but, but after you, when you're praying about it, you should be happy about it. Huh? Prayer gives strength. We're just trying to help somebody lift Jesus. Somebody put out there extol. <laughs> David said, we got to read this thing. We got to get it out of here. We're just talking about endurance today. And I hope this has blessed you already. He said, oh, Lord, for thou, you have lifted me up. Huh? You lifted me up. Your love keep lifting me higher. Y'all remember that? That's a secular song. But, but when you're talking about God, it's a, it's a gospel song. <laughs> It's all according to who, you, who your you is. <laughs> See, some people you might be a person. It might be a man. It might be a woman. Huh? <laughs> it might be a, a something. It might be a man, a something, a somewhere. But when you're saved and, and, and you say, Your love keep lifting me higher. Lord, have mercy. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about God. Than I've ever been lifted before. Huh? <laughs> huh? Anybody out there feel like that when you got saved? Huh? Your love keep lifting. Jackie Whistling. You lift it. Oh, lift. Higher. Higher. And higher. Huh? You love, see that's God, you, you got to bring some excitement with it. Just Lord Almighty, I feel like saying, oh, where you at, boy, I need you in here playing the guitar or something. Whoo, higher, higher, higher. See, see gospel music will move you from, from when you're down and lift you up. Hmm? It'll do it. It can be fast like Jackie Wilson. 
or it can be slow. Lord, lift us up where we belong, huh? where the eagles fly on a mountain high. Huh? <laughs> See, God is about lifting up, about extolling. And in other words, you well, you got to endure the down until you can get up. Huh? You got to learn how uh, sometimes to fake it until you can make it. <laughs> hey Amen. But but it's not really faking it. You just on hold. You just on. You just in the. You just in the steady. You in a holding pattern. I'm holding steady. I don't know who I'm talking to out there today, but it's you. You holding steady. You 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 enduring it right now. I, I know I know it's rough, but you endure it. If you endure it, I guarantee you, when God bring you out of it, He going He's gonna catapult you. To your next level. But you cannot get there a lot of times unless you endure hard times as a good soldier. That's why endurance is a part. Crow Leo, thank you for joining us all the way in, in London. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. Man, I hope this is helping somebody. I hope this is helping somebody. I feel like singing all of them songs, but we got to go on. We got to go on. This is not no choir anniversary today. We got to go on. <laughs> He said, Lord, you have lifted me up and has not made not made my foes to rejoice over me. <laughs> We're stopping, Lena. We're stopping right here. Stop. We're stopping the bus. Now, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Let me tell you something. Now, the people, the fo foes mean an enemy. Foes mean an enemy. That's what foes mean. Foe means uh, somebody against you. Now, some people... Uh, rejoice in your downfall. Are y'all listening to me? Some people rejoice in your downfall. That's not good. That's not good at all. Amen. But notice what he said. He said, Lord, you fixed it so they won't rejoice over me. They, 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 I'm getting blessed. And don't you know that when you get blessed and when you show courage, that'll make them shut up. Now, if you crying and acting wimpy and, and acting skimpy, and acting kind of limpy, and acting like you can, you kind of gimpy, amen, and then you're wondering why they laughing at you, they laughing at you because you're supposed to be a Christian, you're supposed to be able to endure stuff. Look at them over there, they don't know what to do, over there twiddling, th supposed to be in church, look at them at home over there cutting grass. Huh? <laughs> I know they're not, they, they not getting strong because they're not where they're supposed to be, growing like they're supposed to be going. Planted by a tree, like a tree planted by the river, uh, by the water that, that will bring forth its fruit in the season and whose leaf will not wither. Look at them withering over there because they're not with God. Lord have mercy. That's why you got to stay with God. That's why you got to stay with God. I need somebody to put out there stay with God. Huh? I know it's a little difficult sometimes, but you got to stay with God. <laughs> I know the neighbors are uh, cutting grass on Sunday, but, hey amen, you need to stay with God. Uh, if you have to do it on the Sunday, God understand, but, but just to be doing it on the Sunday, to stay out of church, oh, Lord, he said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Uh, uh, if you have to do it on Sunday, do it. Mm -hmm, because if uh, a sheep would fall in a ditch on a Sunday. You got to get your sheep out of the ditch. And, but uh, if you can get him out on Friday or Saturday, get him out then. <laughs> oh, Y'all listening to me. <laughs> you got to learn how to endure. Am I helping somebody? Stay with God. Stay with him. And you can endure this thing. Come on, we got to move on. Verse 2. Verse 2. We're just on verse 2. Come on, I need everybody to read. Come on, Tamika. Come on, I need, I need all the men and the women. I need all y'all to read this right here loud as you can. It said, O oh Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. <laughs> Hold right there. See, a lot of people don't get their healing because they don't cry to God. You cry to everybody else. Bring, bring, bring. Hey, hey, what's up, man? What you doing? Man, I ain't doing nothing, man. I just, man, I just... Don't feel like doing nothing, man. I just don't want to do it, man. I, man, yeah, I, man, I didn't even, I didn't even, no, man, I just don't, mm-mm, man. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, but I just don't. No, you got to learn how to say, 
Yeah, I'm not feeling good, but I need you to pray with me right now. Come on, we getting ready to pray this thing up. We getting ready to change the volume. We getting ready to turn up in here. We getting ready to turn up our praise. Um, pray with me. You got to find somebody who can be positive in a negative place. Did y'all hear me? Can y'all put that out there? You got to find somebody who can be positive in a negative place. Did y'all hear me? Reverend Williams, God bless you. I said I need somebody that can be positive in a negative place. And then he said, Lord, when I cried to you, when I cried to you, when I told you about it, when, when you saw my tears. See, some people go cry on people's shoulders that don't even care nothing about you. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, you just like to uh, the, the cry on their shoulder uh, uh, just, just so that you could, can, can, can feel that muscle leading up to the shoulder. But you better learn how to cry to God. Huh? He heard my cry. <laughs> I, I know the Lord heard my cry. He'll hear your cry. Um, if Bartimaeus was here, <laughs> he would tell you I was standing by the roadside begging. And when I heard the commotion, I knew it wasn't an ordinary man. When I heard the crowd growing, I knew it wasn't an ordinary man. Mm -mm -mm. When I heard the camels and the donkeys coming by, I knew it wasn't an ordinary man. And uh, when I heard it was the son of David, <laughs> this David we just talked about, run down the family. Mm -mm -mm. Generations to Jesus. Fourteen generations from Abraham. Amen to David. Amen to David to Babylon. And then from Babylon, fourteen to Jesus. Fourteen plus fourteen plus fourteen is forty-two generations. Oh, Lord. And uh, when he heard it, he said, Son of David. Have mercy on me. He cried himself. <laughs> See, that, that's all I'm trying to say. You got to learn how to cry for help yourself. Huh? You're always looking in the yellow pages. Stop letting your fingers do the walking. <laughs> Stop letting your thumb do the twirling or the pushing or the scrolling. No, you got to learn how to cry to him. David said, when, when, I, when, I, when I praised him and lifted him up and when I cried, he healed me. And, and, and that's all I'm going to say. Uh, don't, don't miss your healing. Uh, don't be too proud to cry out to God. Did that help somebody? Huh? Oh, Lord. Y'all got it out there. Y'all with me. Y'all with me. Y'all with me. Good Lord Almighty. We got to get out of here. Endurance, my brothers and sisters, is so important. That's why you need the right people around you. <laughs> you can have the best equipment in the world. You can have the best training in the world. You can have the best time to work in the world. But if you don't have the right people around you, when it's time to work and don't mind working, nothing still won't get done. Now, you, you can take that for what it's worth. Huh? Yeah, I, I, I got to go. Come on, verse 3. Come on, I need everybody to read here. I need everybody to read here. It said, Oh Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Good Lord, from the what? From the grave. In other words, David was saying that, that I was down so low, I felt like I was going to die. Anybody out there ever felt like they were going to die? Hmm? Anybody feel like that now? That, that things are headed, amen, in the opposite direction. Oh Lord. David said, I, 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 was, I, I was headed toward the grave, but, but God, when I began to praise you and you healed me, mm -mm, you changed me. <laughs> See, sometimes God just waiting on you to cry. Huh? Mama done cried for you. Daddy done has cried for you. Sisters and brothers have cried for you. People you don't even know done cried for you, and you're not crying for yourself. People got to get to the point, and we got to tell our friends and family, you got to cry for yourself. You, you, you trying to take me to an early grave. 
You got to wake up and, and cry out to God yourself. You got to endure what you're going through, but in the midst of it, you got to ask God for help. Lord have mercy. He said, asking it shall be given. That's what the word said. Jesus said that. And Jesus backed up what he said. God bless you. Man, y'all are awesome. Notice what he said. He said, thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. I wasn't ready to go down to the pit. The grave is a pit. Huh? It, you, most people I've heard are lowered down in their grave. They're not, they're not led up to the grave. No, it's down in the ground. It, it, it was down in the pit. And that's what they say about Joseph. You remember uh, when his brother sold him into slavery, they told him down in the pit. He was alive, but he was dead at the same time. Yes, Lord Almighty. I'm trying to help somebody in here today. You're alive, but you're dead at the same time because you're in the pit and folk are, 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 are so negative around you and, and giving you bad advice. And you, and you, but you got to learn how to look to the hills in which comes your help, your help coming from the Lord. You got to understand that you, God don't want us to just uh, uh, hurt ourselves. He wants us to cry out for help. He wants us to pray and praise him. Amen? That's when he heard, when, 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 when Peter lifted up his, the words in his heart that, that had been sown there through the years about God, he said, believe on the Lord Jesus. Huh? And things began, ha things happen when you believe. I, I, can y'all put that out there? I need everybody that can put it out there in the comments. Things happen when you believe. And then after you put that, amen, put right up under it, things happen when you endure. Huh? <laughs> things happen when you endure and things happen when you believe. And when you believe and endure, go together. It began to change things around. Huh? I'm a witness. It, you, you got to hold on. You got to endure. You got to endure. That's all Rev trying to say today. You got to endure. Come on, verse 4. It said, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. The saints of his. Yeah, the saints of God. Sing. Unto God and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Amen. Because his holiness is what makes us holy. It's nothing that we've done to be holy but his righteousness. Our faith in him makes us whole. Uh, when we have faith, he said, your faith made you whole. Your, his, his, your, our faith in him, what he did on the cross, he died and God rose. That's what makes us whole. And that's what enables us to cry even in the midst of sorrow. That's what enables us, amen, to clap our hands even though you might have arthritis. Mm -hmm. That's what calls us to celebrate life in the midst of uh, deceased and gone family members. Huh? Things happen. I see you in the camp. I see you done checked in. One to one in the house. One to one in the house. Jacqueline Payton in the house. Mm-hmm. Y'all in there? Y'all y'all in there? Marcella Poo Brockman in the house. By way of Gaffney, by way of Atlanta, Georgia. Another classmate in the house. Huh? We we, we go through stuff. We gotta go through it. But we can make it, y'all. I'm telling you. We gonna make it. We are winners. But you got to go through. That's part of it. Lord have mercy. That's part of it. I, I, I think that's the first lesson in life. We got to go through the birth canal to live. <laughs> because only when you come through that birth canal uh, does they write down the time that you came out of. Huh? That's when uh, uh, supposedly by man's standards life begins. But life began on the other side of the birth canal. <laughs> life began when you endure stuff that you didn't even know you was enduring. <laughs> huh? That's how it is in faith. That's why we got to hold on and come through that thing. Because when you come through on the other side, there's a, a newness of life that awaits us. Tell your neighbor you got to endure. Tell them you got to do it. You just got off the bus, all right. One that just got off the bus and got on the Bible study bus. Thank you, Mr. One Kemp, for joining us. Bless you. Love you so much. Love all of y'all. 
and those who are not able to come in, I love you too. Please know I do. Amen. But I understand, you know, where you are and that kind of thing. Diane is in the house. Diane may bearing. How you doing, Diane? Well, we're having a good time in here today. Man, now, 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 verse 5 is what we're trying to get to for today. This is very important. I need y'all to put that out there. Everybody that can type it out there, put out there in the comment. This is very, very, very important. I want you to put three berries on it. Amen. This is very, very, very important. Amen. I need you to put that out there if you can. Come on. I need you to put it out there. Trust your fingers. Hit them letters. Come on. This is very, very important. Come on. Some of you haven't come in yet all, all, all Bible study. I need everybody. This is very, very, very important. Three berries. One for the past, one for the present, and one for the future. One for the Father, uh, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Huh? One for the grandfather, and one for the grand for the father, and one for the son. Huh? One for Abraham, one for Isaac, and one for Jacob. Are y'all listening to me? One for your parents, one for you, and one for your children. Can I get a witness? I need everybody that can put it out there, put it out there, because it's very, so very, very important. Amen. Three, amen, berries. <laughs> Thank you so much. I pray that you're getting your faith and you're getting your strength and that you are growing even as we speak because you're going through something. I don't know what it is, but you're going through it indoor because this is very, very important. Now, we looked at David in this. We looked at his situation. We, we, we remember where, when, what was happening when he, when he wrote this. I'm going to ask that a question again. Where, what was going on when David wrote this? I want to see if y'all remember the answer. Where was it when he wrote this? Amen. Amen. Where was it? What was he doing? What, what was it going on in his life when he wrote uh, uh, Psalm 30? Amen. Verse 5. 5. Come on. Verse 5. Loud as you can. For his anger endureth. Huh, his anger. You mean to tell me God get mad? Yes, he does. <laughs> God does get mad sometimes. Come on, verse 5. For his anger endureth but a moment. Yeah. See, when the quicker you get back in the fellowship of God, say I'm sorry, confess your sin, acknowledge that, you're, that you've been faithless, because remember, he told them on many times, he said, where's your faith? Oh, ye of little faith. Come on now. Y'all been hanging out with me, and now you talking like you don't have no faith. See, that's what happens. You, you got to talk positive. You, you got to show your faith in your vocabulary. You have to show your faith in your actions. You, you just can't say it and, and do it, not do it. You just cannot do it and not say it. You got to do it and say it. Faith and works go together. Faith comes by hearing and then hearing the works and then doing. That's why in football, you, they got to hear the play. They meet in the huddle to tell them what the play is, whether it's going to be a run or a pass, break, and then we go exit, then we go do it. Huh? And then sometimes there's a fumble along the way, but we know we still got to block and run if we get it. But we, that's enduring the, the, the uncertainties. That's why you can learn a lot from sports. Some people hate sports, but, but you can learn a lot from sports. But, but even in the uncertainty, we still know we got to get down the field because the clock is about to run out. Amen. And we got to get to the end zone to win. Got to get to the end zone to win. That's what we got to get to. God bless you. Is that happening to anybody? Amen. Verse 5, he said, so, so my next question is, Amen. I, 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 and I asked that question. I don't see the answer yet. I got a delay on this end, though. Amen. What was Jesus, I mean, excuse me, what was David doing when he wrote this psalm? Why was this psalm written? I'm still looking for the answer. I'm still looking for the answer. And then, and I, my next question is, does God get angry? Hmm? Does, does God get angry? Yeah, he does get angry. But if you confess and admit it and pray and start praising your way through it, he changes quickly because God loves praise. He loves extolling. So I'm just trying to show you, but you got to mean it now. You, he knows when you're faking. <laughs> 
and he knows when you're serious. That's one thing I love about God. God knows when you're faking and he knows when you're serious. Amen. Now, look, remember when Jesus got angry and turned the tables over, too. And then it tells us in the New Testament, be angry and sin not. Come on, I need the answers, y'all. I, I need the answers out there. What was David doing when he wrote the song? Some of y'all wrote the answer a while ago, early on in the lesson. What was he doing when he wrote this song? Amen. I'm going to give you another hint. He was building something. That's, that's the only hint I can give you without giving you the full answer. What, what, he was building something when he wrote this song. I'm looking for the answer. I need the answer out there. All right? And then it said his favor is life. In his favor is life. Yes, so, so if, if, if you uh, uh, get God's attention and he likes you and, and he's not angry with you, he gives us life. He gives us life more abundantly. Amen, he gives us life more abundantly. And that's what happens when we endure. Thank you so much, Miss Sharon Leach. He was building his house. That's what he was building his house when he wrote this. Amen. Now, as we say this, his favor is life. Yeah. His favor is life. It'll help you better if you're in the right standing with him. Amen. Don't you know when you're in the right standing, amen, uh, with a, a, a company, amen, they won't harass you about payment. <laughs> you know, when you're in the right standing, amen, with a group, or if you got to have your ID to get in a place and you don't have your ID, but they know you, they see you every day, and you treat them nice, how many know they might give you some favor and let you in anyway, even though you don't have the badge? See, that's why it's good to be nice to people. Amen. So that you can get the favor that comes along with life. Amen. The favor that comes along with life. See, when you get... When Christ is your flavor, <laughs> you have favor. Oh, good Lord Almighty. Did I help somebody right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When Jesus Christ is your flavor, <clears throat> when godliness is your flavor, when righteousness is your flavor, amen, that's when you get God's favor. Huh? No, listen to me, listen to me. Amen. I cannot taste the flavor in the can pepper or the season in the jar. I, I just know it's in there. Right? And sometimes if it's not on tight, you 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 can smell it. Hmm? But when it's on tight and it's sealed tight, you it, it shows you on there that it's cinnamon or nutmeg or whatever flavor it is or seasoning it is. It tells you what it is, but but a lot of time you don't know until you open it. And you can smell it. That's why you got to lift God up so, so that the, the, the godliness that's in you, that's been sealed up because of, of, of the way you think or what you went through or your ups and downs or what you endure. That's why you got to endure and still let some godliness out when you're up and when you're down. I'm trying to help somebody understand how this thing works. And when that happens, when that happens, when that happens, Amen. That's when God uh, blesses us and, and is no longer angry with us and accepts us back and give us favor. And then notice what it said. That last part is, is what we hear. We've been hearing it a long time. Good morning, Miss uh, uh, Hardy. Glad to have you with us. You and Mr. Hardy, God bless y'all and happy anniversary to you. Belated anniversary to you. God bless you. Amen. Lisa Petty, God bless you. And Bernard, God bless you. Now, notice what it said here. That last part, it said, weeping may endure, amen, for a night. Yeah, weeping may endure for a night. That was, Doris Bonner, good morning to you. Good afternoon, rather. It's after 12 now. Amen. Y'all see that, that last part? Weeping may endure for a night. Have you ever had to cry? <laughs> Weeping may endure. If you, if you keep crying, you, you'll keep crying. Now, it didn't say weeping will endure for the whole night. No, it said it may. As soon as you start lifting them up and lift up your head and change your, your frame of thought, that crying will stop. 
huh? But but sometimes crying is part of your change. Crying is part of your reality. Amen. Crying is a part. Thank you, uh, Miss Janine. Crying is a part of your endurance. So weeping may endure. I cry. I cry. David knew about crying and going through stuff. It may endure for a night. Amen. And the night is the dark part of the 24-hour period. But notice what it said. It said, but joy cometh in the morning. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to help somebody say. It's morning time. You've been going through that thing too long. It's morning time. Huh? You've been pouting too long. It's morning time. You got to learn how to praise God anyhow. You got to learn how to go and sing on the choir anyway. Amen. I don't like standing beside her. You don't have to stand beside her. Go stand beside somebody else. But don't let that keep you from giving God his glory and you opening up your seal so that your flavor can get out and give God some praise and others can smell the aroma and know that it's godliness that you spread it and not mess. Because there's a different smell between mess. <laughs> and, and, and seasoning. <laughs> Amen. That's all I'm going to say. That's a different smell. That's a different kind of smell. Huh? When it smells good, it makes you smile. When it smells good, it makes you want to wash your hands. When, when, when it smells good, amen, amen, it, it makes you go look for a napkin. When, when, when it smells good, amen, you'll be wondering what time is dinner. But when it's mad, you ever seen a baby laughing? <laughs> Little baby laugh, can't even talk yet. And then they make that face, and then all of a sudden, you smell something. It smell different. A, 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 a messing smell different than a blessing. <laughs> I need somebody to put that out there, and we got to get out of here. But weeping may do for a night, but joy come in the morning. You got to bring joy to your situation. I know you're crying, but you got to bring joy. So what you mean, preacher? I, I know you. We, I, I got to do it too. Amen. Yes, when daddy, my daddy passed, I still, I was sad on one occasion, but I had joy on the other side because I know that his trouble of the world is over now. So you got to learn how to find joy in the midst of difficulty. That's all. And when you do that, I guarantee you, amen, you'll come up. Amen. When you do that, amen, you can come out. When you do that, amen, you can let your light shine. When you do that, and you can show others that God is still strong, amen, in the midst of adversity. When you do that, amen, I guarantee you, it'll lift up somebody else's head when your head lifted up. Huh? It, it, it will. It'll do it. And I'm going to tell you this little story, and then I'm going to go. Amen. This guy had dropped a whole bunch of dimes, a, bunch of, a whole bunch of dimes. It was at night. He, he had a lot of dimes. He had a couple bags of dimes. Now, he didn't have no dime bag. <laughs> but he had some dimes in a bag. Now, I want y'all to get the story right. Now, y'all hear me now. He had some dimes, some coins. Let me say some coins. He had some coins, and, 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 and he, he, he dropped those coins. And, and when he dropped those coins, amen, and it was at night, amen, he had to make sure that he, that he had his money because it was the exact amount he needed. So when, when, when everybody walked by them, they saw him with the head down and saw him down there reaching. Amen. And, and they didn't know what they were doing. So so when the people walked by, they just thought that they were sad and lonely and feeling down and, and just, just depressed and all of like that. But all I'm trying to say is, just because you see me with my head down, just because you see me crying, amen, I'm not going to keep it down long. I'm coming up. So I'm not going to be around there scratching and all of this stuff and worried about this and that. You got to find praise and come on up out of there, whether it's in the pitch black dark or whether you're on the spotlight. You got to learn how to lift up your head, oh ye gates, and the King of Glory shall come in. God bless you. Tell your neighbor, hold up your head, stop crying, and, and give God some praise. That's what I need you to do. Stop crying, hold up your head, and give God some praise. That's our lesson for today. You got to learn how to endure. Amen. It might endure. It said it may endure. Now, 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 but as soon as you stop it, the crying will cease. God bless you. I love you. And, and I pray that you will pray ye for everyone on this Bible study. I hope this has given you some strength and some hope to endure. Amen. And it's all right to go through the ups and downs of life. But don't stay down long. You got to pray. The quicker you pray about it, the quicker you can move on. Do y'all with me? The quicker you pray about it, the quicker you can move on. The, the quicker you can think forward 
Amen. Uh, the quicker you can stop from thinking backwards. Pay much for the amen. Um, we have this week the, the Tate family. Uh, Deacon Luther Tate. Amen. Went home to be with the Lord. A very fine deacon of the Mount Olive Baptist Church. There that his wife, uh, the late uh, Reverend Sister uh, uh, Lily. Amen. Uh, Tate. I found it there many years ago in their current pastor, the Reverend uh, Clarence Davis, the wonderful fine pastor. We're praying much for you, uh, for all of the Tate family, for uh, his daughter, Lady uh, Lutina uh, uh, Massey, and Dr. Thomas uh, Massey, Jr., to all of you, to the grandchildren. We love you, and we're praying much for you in this your time of sorrow. Please remember also uh, the um, Crosby family. Amen. I think uh, uh, Deacon Tate's service is Saturday at 1, I do believe, at Bethel. Amen. Saturday at 11 at the Gimmo Mortuary uh, service will be held for Norman Crosby. Norman Dean, my friend. Amen. Crosby uh, went home to be with the Lord. We're praying much for his children, for his sister Van, and for the entire Crosby family. Uh, may God bless each of you in this time of sorrow. Please remember the Lowe family. Ms. Gladys Lowe. Uh, there in uh, Suitland, Maryland, went home to be with the Lord. She was the uh, sister of uh, Deacon Willie Dean Surratt, amen, uh, the uh, sister-in-law of Minister May Francis Surratt. To your family, we love you, Minister May, and thank you so much. I think I did see your name a few moments ago. Thank you for joining us today also, Minister Surratt and your family. We're praying much for you. Um, please remember uh, uh, the McFadden family. Uh, Tyrone McFadden, uh, Kay Connolly family, and Ida Wilson family, and the family of Tanisha Williams, uh, uh, families in Gaffney that are bereaved. And I have a couple of more, and we are going to pray. Um, we want you to remember uh, also, this says uh, Miss Lizzie uh, Foster Frawley. Amen. We send our regards to the Frawley family, to the Reverend. Uh, Foster and my friend and brother uh, uh, Lewis Foster and his family, uh, we send our condolences to you and to your family. We love you. And also, um, uh, she is was the wife of Thomas Frawley and the mother of Devin Wilson and Dion Shippen. We send our regards to you. May God bless all of you. I love you. Keep the faith. Uh, keep God first in your life. And again, we want you to know, amen, that there's nobody like Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this lesson today that we have experienced uh, looking at the life of David. God, one of your greatest servants, one of the greatest heroes of the Bible. Father, even him, he had some difficult days. Even he too, Father, felt like uh, 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 he was going to the grave. He said he was headed to the grave, but, but God, when he began to preach him, uh, you healed him and, and gave him a new frame of mind and, and gave him a new outlook because even in the midst of his sorrow, you still were blessing him with a new home. And God, allow us to look past uh, our, our situations and know that we're still blessed and find strength and know, God, that we must encourage others. Thank you for uh, this lesson today. I pray that it will be food for the soul and that it will be strength to the bones. Father, as we pray, we ask, O oh God, that you will continue uh, to uh, bless uh, 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 the people. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray, O oh God, that you will bless them, all the bereaved families whose name we call. God bless uh, all the churches that's represented here today. Bless the Concord Baptist Church. Bless the Thicket Mountain Baptist Association. And bless all the people, God, that are intertwined, uh, that help make the salt of the earth. God! If the salt has lost its savor, God, we have to have some godliness about us in this. That's why we have to endure. And that's what salt is. Salt help preserves. So, God, I pray that you will give us the ability to endure, to remain godly in an ungodly situation sometimes. Thank you. Bless our family. Bless the children. God, bless our health care workers. Bless all of our first responders and our police and, and all of those civil workers who give up their life, God, to help make sure our life is better. Bless the soldiers everywhere, as we read that David, too, was a soldier. 
And God bless all the soldiers in the army of the Lord. Thank you for this lesson today. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. Huh? Oh, I wish I could hear you. Say it out loud. Come on, say it out loud. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you again at 10 this Sunday morning with the Concord Baptist Church. Amen. YouTube and, and, and uh, our Facebook Live. We thank you so much. But also keep in mind that we are on 1180, your spiritual friend, every second and fourth Wednesday at 430. Join uh, uh, Deacon Charles Montgomery, uh, all of his wonderful staff, uh, cousin Eddie Bridges, amen, down at 1180, your spiritual friend, all of those wonderful radio personalities, amen, his son, Deacon uh, uh, Montgomery, amen, the Reverend Howard, and uh, uh, and also, amen, um, uh, all of our wonderful, 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 wonderful radio personalities there. Come on. Amen. We on there too. Amen. Every second and fourth, amen, Wednesday at 4.30. Amen. On a Wednesday at 4.30, you will see, uh, you will listen to the services from the Concord Baptist Church. I love you. And you can make it. You can endure. Amen. The race is not to the swift and not to the strong, but he that endure to the end. Endure, my brother. And do it, my sister, and watch God uh, 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 give you some favor in your life. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you Sunday again at 10, my friend.